Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, I hope you all had a great Christmas and that the school year has started really well for you. Uh, it was requested on a comment of another video that I do an overview about how to keep from getting burned out in medical school, which is something that I've kind of really prided myself on, is that I feel like I haven't gotten that burned out. And in a context where we see 25% of medical students suffering with depression and being more depressed than our age and sex matched peers, I think that it's really important to kind of go over those things that help you take care of you. So that's what this video is about and I'll just jump right in. The first thing that I want to stress in avoiding burnout is to make friends in your class. I think that if you talk to people who are like professionals, they're going to tell you, hey, yeah, work sucks a lot less when I don't hate the people that I'm working with and when I like my coworkers are and my colleagues are my friends. And everything is more fun to do with your friends, right? So I think that it's important, and this is what I did, is even before medical school started, we all got together, we grabbed lunch, we went out for drinks, we just made an, like a Facebook group and made a, an effort to connect with each other and learn about each other and befriend each other. And I think that that went a long way in preventing me from getting burned out because if it was 3 a.m. and I was stuck at school studying, at least two or three of people that I really like to do things with were also stuck at school studying with me. And it just sucks less. And you can order a pizza together and you can laugh about things and you can complain and vent about how dumb half of this stuff is that you have to learn when it's all going to be outdated in a few years anyway. But you need to know the first step, so you're going to learn it because that's just the way that medical school is. So I think that things like are just better when you make an effort to have relationships around you and medical school is no exception. So make friends in your class. These are going to be people you can complain to who are going to get it because medical school is a weird animal that people don't understand, um, especially when they don't have experience going through medical school or working in healthcare. Um, they're going to try and they will sympathize with you, but as far as like really getting it, I feel like they're probably not going to do that and it can be frustrating to talk to those people and not feel like they're understanding you. So getting that group of friends in medical school, the people that you want to do things with, the people that you can bemoan tests with and commiserate with and go out for fuzzies after your tests with makes things a lot better and personally helped me avoid getting burned out for the first few years. So the second thing that I would say to avoid burnout is to make sure that you maintain your relationships outside of medical school too. Like these are the people that are gonna keep you connected to the outside world. They're gonna keep you grounded. They're gonna remind you that, hey, yeah, things might suck in med school, but look at all this other really great stuff that you've got going for you in your life. Like take a step outside of your little med school bubble and, okay, well, this isn't a very good example because of the political climate, but I'm gonna keep going. Like <laughs> Not everything sucks. So. It's good to, you know, have those tethers to things that are outside of medicine. I think that it's important to stay well-rounded, to keep up with your hobbies, to keep up with people that you care about and then you have relationships with. And this can be friends, it can be family, it really just doesn't matter. Like, maintain those relationships outside of medical school because they will, those people will keep you sane. I live with someone that isn't in medical school and I swear to God, I don't know what I would do without her. She's my best friend and she keeps me just like keeps my feet on the ground when I've got all this medical stuff going on. She's like, hey, step back, relax. It's gonna be okay, you've totally got this. Which I know that she doesn't always get like what's going on in med school, but it doesn't matter. She makes me feel better anyway. Um, and I have found that going out to eat is a great way to do this. Medical students still need to eat. Go out for a dinner with your friends who aren't in medical school. Sometimes go to dinner with your friends who are in medical school. But if you feel like you're really pressed for time and you are stressed out about getting stuff done, you still have to eat, you still have to take care of like your basic needs, go out to dinner or lunch with a friend. This is actually a piece of advice that my mentor gave me when I was coming into medical school and I feel like it has helped me so much. He said, every single day, take 15 minutes, an hour, it doesn't really matter how long it is or how short it is, do something for you. Drop medicine for like a hot minute, and just do something that makes you happy. It can be like de-stressing with a cup of tea. It can be watching a quick show like on Netflix. It can be watching The Bachelor, like trashy TV, like I love. Um, something that I did a lot, and especially since I started medical school, is I'll go grab like a lush bath bomb from the mall and I'll take like a nice soothing bath 
and it's just something that you do for you um, that really keeps you I don't know how, how to say this like it's just something that you do for you that makes you feel good and I think that it's important in medical school to make sure that you still feel good and you still feel like you're taken care of y'all are gonna think that I am crazy for this one I'm not I swear um, during the first two years of medical school very rarely did I go an entire week where I studied every single day I really made an effort to take at least one day off a week um, and I think that that really helped me like stay focused when I needed to study because my brain wasn't just exhausted from studying nonstop day in day out so I think it's really important to take a day for you like a whole day so run errands get groceries see people that you don't usually get to see just like cook for the week because there's like a chick-fil-a on our campus and i swear to god i eat so much chick-fil-a i know that it's not like the worst fast food for you but like meal prep or go work out or do something with your day i don't care you can binge watch netflix all day just take a day off it's like just take the day like meditate de-stress and you will feel so much better I usually went to football games in the fall, especially. On Saturdays, Saturdays were my day. Saturdays I would go tailgate, I would go to OU football games, I would watch all the other games that day. Um, that's like what I like to do in the fall, obviously in the spring I have fewer things to do. Maybe I just make YouTube videos, I don't know. So yeah, take, take full days off. And sometimes it's not always possible. Sometimes it's Friday and you have a test on Monday and you need that weekend time to really hit the books and study and put everything together from the week for your test, and that's fine. I'm not saying you have to do it every single weekend. I didn't do it every single weekend, but I made an effort to do it regardless, and I think that that is uh, one of the things that really helped me fight burnout. Uh, uh, this video is gonna be fun to edit. Okay. I also think that one of the things that will really help people is figuring out the best way that you study so that you can study the least amount of time. Why study for six hours in an inefficient way if you can study for three hours in a way that works really well for you, that you're gonna retain the material, you're gonna understand it, and you're gonna be able to remember it for the test and for practice. I really think that it's important to try different methods and figure out what your jam is and study efficiently because when you study efficiently, you have more time to do things that you like and to see people that you like and to volunteer and give back and get really plugged into you know some patient care aspects that you miss out on the first two years when you're slugging through books and pathoma videos and questions and stuff like that. So I think that that's, if that's doable for you, then do that. Study smart, not hard. I think that another thing that keeps me from being burned out is that if things are coming up that I really want to do, if there's a concert on like a school night, I'll go to it if I, if I really can, if I can manage it. If there's a Thunder game, if there's an OU football game, um, if there's a movie out that I really want to see, I don't let medical school like take things away from me, Is that, if that makes any sense. I still splurge on those things. I still buy $50, $50 like makeup palettes. I, can I wear half? No, I can't wear like any of these colors in the hospital. Look at how like red that is and there's like a teal. No, I can't, I can't wear that in the hospital. Like that's not technically professional. Do I have the palette anyway? Yeah, I have it anyway because it makes me happy and on my off days, I get to play with makeup and stuff and it's nice. So like, I guess it boils down to like, treat yourself. I think that helps. Like, splurge on brunch, I don't know. I'm, is, am I like getting real basic? I feel like I'm being really basic right now. Oh well, maybe being basic has kept like gotten me through medical school. I'll take it, whatever works. That's really it, it's just whatever works. Take time to volunteer, take time to give back, take time to remember why you're doing medicine. And most of the time, for most of us, it's for the people that we're gonna help. So go volunteer at a free clinic, go babysit kids during one of like the diabetes education meetings. Uh, take those opportunities to really get plugged into the community that you're gonna be serving during your third and fourth year and it'll just bring back like all of the good feelings about why you love medicine and why you want to be involved in this um, really, really crazy system that we've all signed up to be in. That's like my last tip, is to go out and do some good in the world. Because when you're studying for 12 hours a day and you don't see the light of day, 
um, from any like outside of a window, then I think that it's important to like make those connections with people. And maybe that's just what it boils down to is maintain connections. Um, don't let yourself get sucked into this void where medicine is the like the only thing that you do your entire life. Like connect to the outside world, connect to your family, connect to your friends and connect to your patients and connect, like make an effort to connect back with yourself and you know, know what you like and know what makes you happy and don't neglect to do those things. So that's what helps me. I hope that it helps you guys. Um, this has been a really quick video, I hope. So keep checking back and I will have new videos coming hopefully very shortly. Thanks, bye guys.